So today's topic is a very critical and a very important aspect of wireless network. It's it's called benchmarking. So the general terminology, if you ask me, benchmarking, benchmarking stands for you know evaluating different networks. So against a benchmark, so, so you you have some set of specific set of KPIs which which define the health of a wireless network. So what we need to do is operators keep doing this benchmarking and there are third party agencies, there are vendors as well as there are a lot of OEMs. It's like Ericsson, Nokia, Huawei and who they do it themselves so that they understand and where they stand against each other. So now you get you get these news that, you know, Geo is the ARPU of Geo is rising, the subscribers of Geo are rising. So how, how does all this happen? This happens by benchmarking. So hope you are going to enjoy the topic and I'll try to also elaborate more about benchmarking, how it happens, what are the, what is the tools, what are the tools that are used and the entire process. And I'm going to give you some case studies as well, actually, of how the benchmarking is done. So this is, this is just the, Birds eye view because uh, in 45 minutes it is a bit difficult to explain you in detail, but I'll try to give you a generic bird's eye view of how the entire process happens. So these are the contents of the webinar today. Benchmarking the different service delivery scenarios of benchmarking. What do you how do you exactly extract the network database and what are the different types of benchmarking services? And of course, we are going to talk about further as well about the career path and the job opportunities that are existing in the telecom wireless field. So what is a benchmarking service? I mean, the first question that you might ask. So like I said, in general terms, now in telecom terms, benchmarking is basically using software or a Gen X probe, and then you go on the field and then you get the data. You basically collect the data of a wireless network operator, say a Reliance, say a Vodafone or an Airtel. Earlier, we had quite a few operators, but now we only have the state-run BSNL, MTNL, and we have Reliance, Vodafone, and Airtel, which are the private players. So if you want to benchmark, then you want to have enough mobiles with you to collect the data of all of these operators so that you can evaluate which one has a very good coverage, which one has a very good quality and the mean opinion score and you know all the other KPIs as well. So we are gonna discuss this in the following slides. And also we are gonna talk about some other operators as well and what they do and whatnot across the world. So it's just gonna be touching upon everything. We are not gonna get into too much detail, but like I said, it's going to be a bird's eye view. So what is the definition again of, you know, network and service quality benchmark? Okay. So end-to-end -end mobile service needs verification. So if, if we need the mobile service to be functioning, then we need to have a verification mechanism and we need to have a comparison with the operators which are existing locally and internationally. So the best way to do is via is is via drive testing. So, what are the services? I mean, if we the services which mobile networks offer are voice, video. Or we have MMS nowadays. We have like high speed video as well. Video calling. We do email. We do HTTP uploads, downloads, WAP. So, all of these services are given by the operators. So, we. Have have to compare all of them, but the basic parameters remain the same. So we can't have a benchmarking on a lot of things as well, but we have some few key, very important parameters, which I'll discuss. And then there are the network KPIs as well. So we can benchmark based on that as well. So that is accessibility. So just I'll give you a brief definition about these as well. So accessibility is nothing but when you are accessing the network, I mean, the percent of times when you try calling and then you're not getting a busy tone or something that stands for accessibility. Retainability is the ability to retain the call. So once you are on a call, 
and you don't get dropped so uh, say in a hundred times you drop five times so the retainability percentage there stands at 95 percent then there is integrity which is a throughput which is of course now the very important thing because data data like they say is a new oil so when it comes to high speed packet data and you we are talking now with 5g we can go up to one gigabit per second so you can imagine that you're trying to download a game of thrones or something and you're just downloading within five seconds so that is that is integrity which is is i feel the very peak actually the most important of the kpis of a network then there is mobility as well because if you are traveling in a train or a car or a bus and then you are you know shifting switching the call from one carrier to the other or from one uh, base station to another base station that is where mobility comes in the place so it's handover and of course coverage so you know you need coverage indoor coverage as well when you are you know packed inside your homes and nowadays we are all stuck in this lockdown so you need in building good in building coverage so coverage quality retainability accessibility these are all the kpis these are all the key performance indicators on which we need to benchmark one operator against the other so like uh, i said earlier temps and genx pro are the worldwide used like the most popular of the tools which are used for benchmarking and coming to another tool which i had not mentioned earlier but this is also this is a nokia proprietary nemo so like i said there are three biggest oems which you need to be aware when you come to you know wireless telephony or for that matter even these are these were the pillars of telecom like ericsson is a swedish giant and nokia is a finnish giant so these are the huge giants and now the last 15 20 years have seen the advent of chinese vendors coming into the market so it is huawei which is now taking over and you know competing with these ericsson's and nokia of the world so that is genx pro and temps is ericsson pro rightly to so that is what is mentioned in these slides temps is the ericsson proprietary tool for drive testing and benchmarking probe is the huawei proprietary tool and then we've got nemo which is a nokia proprietary tool so it is uh, this tool is not just used for benchmarking but it can be used for regular in service drive testing and optimization as well so whenever you're trying to do a drive test daily drive testing is a never ending process so if you ask me about it you know drive test engineering is also a job so if you know how to drive test you know how to collect the data that in itself is a job so the thing or benchmarking is another thing but drive testing is like a subset of benchmarking benchmarking is a bigger process that's it moving on so these are the basic benchmarking drive testing principles when it comes to the drive test is benchmarking then how do we proceed so uh, the first thing is you collect the measurements so you files then you latch them to the frequency up on different laptops or handheld devices as well but it is preferred you collect like the data on different laptops so say we are comparing so we need three laptops and then we need some say three four handsets per samples so then once you do this drive test then you need to post process the data so you need you're collecting the data but then you need to understand the data so for that you need a post processing tool as well to process that data then you generate the reports of course you just you know print out the report or you get a pdf the best which 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 operator is meeting the benchmark or exceeding the benchmark coverage of one might be good quality of one might be good throughput of the other might be good so that is how you interpret the results and then of course based on all these things you go to the customer and whoever wants to so the same can be used so benchmarking can be a process where two three operators also can combine together and perform but it is generally done by one operator because like bharti if bharti you know is facing issues in the network they are having a lot of customer complaints 
then they will go to a third party say nokia say ericsson or somebody and then they'll ask them go do the benchmarking i just want to know whether you know my network is better than jio or my network is better than vodafone so that is when you go back to bharti and you know you give them all the correct picture of his network where he stands it could be a remote delivery or it could be a you know hands on on site delivery so a uh, simple drive testing software which allows to implement different sort of setups so this is the remote delivery so the flexible flexible approach is where the solutions are on rental so say a ericsson or a nokia and all will just rent across this software or something to the operator and they can do on its own so there's there's nothing much here to discuss except that there are different sort of scenarios which can be adopted when it comes to benchmarking so this is this is a typical test test setup you can say so this these are like i said you know these are the mobiles so you know you can have 2g 3g 4g as well but now that 2g has taken a bit of a back seat nowadays operators generally go for 3g and 4g only so you can have one 3g handset then you can have one 4g and now of course once we get 5g we'll have 5g as well so one handset can be used for mo call so what is mo mobile origination then the termination then that one can be used only to terminate the call and one can be used for mean opinion score and one can be used for just for throughput so we need a ftp server as well that's why so this mobile you just you know you connect it with the server and you do a ftp session and then you continuously either upload or download the data to get the upload or download speed so when you call you know you have a voice test node as well why this is needed so for the origination call you are originating from here but somewhere it has to be terminated right so that is where the voice test node would come into play you call to this you call to a fixed number wherein you just get a automated ringtone and then there is a song which keeps happening so it's stuff like that so this is a pretty you know simple explanation where you are having the back end server as well which is you know helping you with the collection of the data and all and then you have the mobiles you have the lappy then there's the internet and of course there's a voice test node and an ftp server so it is it is a bit difficult to understand from the figures but then probably once you are on the field and all will be more useful so what you need to understand is basically what what is to be done so all you need is you need mobiles you need a laptop installed with the temp software and then the back end back end server of course the terms will be there wherein citrix is involved and then there's the ftp server as well so you collect the data the ftp server is where the data keeps collecting so once all this is happening automatically it gets transferred to the ftp server and then it is easier for us to you know post process those files but we can we can also if you are doing that is on the remote this thing but if you are if you are owning the software the data can be collected in the laptop itself okay so once you are doing a mobile origination call and the mobile is connected to the laptop and you are doing a throughput session wherein you are checking the throughput and it is connected to the laptop this this whole process can ha can happen locally as well so you collect the data and all it there are log files which are generated in temps and then there are different sort of other softwares which help you process this data as well so this was a you know pictorial representation of the general test setup so moving moving to the next like i was already i gave you a bit of a intro on this so this is an example like the vodafone group the vodafone like you know the uk group the parent company of idea now is vodafone so vodafone in the uk have their own system their own ta system wherein they have the database setup they have the drive testing setup they have personnel so it, this stuff happens monthly when they compare themselves again probably telefonica or all the other operators in the europe and uk and so on so everything is in house so they do not need to ask anybody you know rent across so it is it is such a big group so it's this is just very small money for them to you know keep their networks health in check and then another like orange is a smallish operator and then poland probably so they use the rental sort of a setup wherein you know 
they rent the test units they rent this node call generator and then they rent the whole drive testing system so and even if in india like we said they may mostly this is the system followed in india rental or then you know airtel vodafone and all give it give it to say a third party and then they do all this and say even a skill link so they can we can if skill link would own this then you know skill link can go and you know deliver this service to them so this is this is the overall workflow which i have already given you but just to you know rephrase first is the preparation phase wherein you know you prepare the whole setup test setup and everything then you do the analysis you collect the stats and everything and then you know you recommend a solution because benchmarking uh, can also be you know useful for performance improvement so in the end of the day why does why does one benchmark so that you know he tries to go about the benchmark so once you get the data of the benchmark if it is not acceptable then it is a iterative process the drive testing keeps happening so it could be benchmarking and performance optimization as well so performance improvement see there's no there's no scope of laxity in wireless industry because the health of the network like our health our health can get degraded any time so we need to have a regular check on the health so that is why this is a iterative process which is being trying to which is which i have been trying to show here pictorially it is round so once the analysis and the recommendation happens if the performance is okay then you just go ahead and give it to the you know performance management of the operator otherwise you get back again to the same process if it is bad then you got to you know do some network fine tuning as well and then you know do some changes in the network recollect the data reanalyze and then go ahead with the recommendation this is but yeah this is we are talking this is not drive test this is network based so that's why when you do a network level performance this thing you don't you need a separate set of tools you just you're not just doing the basic drive test you are getting into network oss so yeah this is Uh, the first one that i have discussed is the drive test based and this is the network based so what is the network based benchmarking data so the roll out statistics so how many sites have been deployed that the whole database of the network is what you will be needing then you will be needing the technologies which are in place say there is already 3g there is 4g and if there is 4g then how many carriers are there and what is the exact frequency range what is the bandwidth that is allocated and what are the major kpis then accessibility retainability mobility like i discussed earlier so these are the network level kpis which will be call setup success rate drop call rate mobility which is handover success rate and then you know you give them based on all this input you give them areas of improvement like i mean again this is an input i'm sorry so what which is which is the pain point i mean so amongst accessibility retainability mobility which exactly is the pain point that if they give us hands on and if they tell us what exactly are their issues then we can go ahead and give them the solutions and benchmark their network so handover and traffic handling as well so handover is a very important thing because this if the handover definitions are not proper then there is going to be a lot of retainability issues in the network so and traffic and they need to also handle loading and you know if one pocket one area say any like in mumbai you say a place like dadar and all so there 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 is going to be a lot of traffic a lot of subscribers so traffic handling parameterization is very important in such places and you got to do load balancing and stuff like that but anyways so that that is the slide and we move ahead so what is what is the roll out status yeah so it's basically we are trying to elaborate each of the each of the parameters each of the inputs when it comes to the network level this thing so what are the roll out stats based on this roll out stat the route is established so this is the country so say this this exactly is say some country say india or whatever a state so in this country we are just benchmarking for this area so you just collect this area and then you do the drive test route so from a google earth 
or say a map info you can just you know make the drive test route like this it's basically a tool called map info which is used to make a drive route and then the drive tester will go and drive on these routes exactly and then collect the samples collect all the kpis on this drive route so uh, the same that it's getting a bit repetitive so the technology status and the usage and the you know main parameters like accessibility retainability mobility are <clears throat> are going to be measured on the drive test so i hope you understand if you are benchmarking in one place then the basic basic thing is the rollout stats the number of sites which are involved so if we have some 100 sites say in this whole cluster so you got to you got to make the drive test accordingly where there is a site as you as you can see here there are sites here which are being displayed right so these are the smallish sites so you see we are not trying to miss the site so you got to drive near to the site you got to drive across the site so that is how the drive test map is being created so these are these are the major kpis like i said accessibility retainability and everything mobility integrity so so it, <clears throat> accessibility would be the setup success rate so rrc rab rrc success rate is a accessibility kpi call setup success rate again accessibility the call setup time uh, this is typically like you get like in 4g it has now come down to say 2 milliseconds and all 10 milliseconds sorry and now 10 20 milliseconds we are trying to get that even lower to a millisecond in 5g and then there is voice call drop rate so this is a retainability kpi this voice call downlink voice call uplink then there is a handover success rate which is part of the mobility kpi and paging as well so paging comes somewhere in accessibility itself i mean when you are accessing the network you get a response of a access message so once once the base station tries to access the network the revert which the base station sends is on the paging channel so that is the paging success rate so this is this is at actually uh, this is probably a slide from some european operator like orange and all and it is just giving a example of which is good and what so orange probably the paging is better and that is how it is giving it let's move on now to the next slide so these these are some new benchmarking related services as well so we discussed legacy services the legacy benchmarking is basically the drive test base so when whenever we talk benchmarking the first thing that comes to be the data which is <clears throat> how is how is the work or there are a lot of data users in the network which pockets are having more, more voice centric customers which pockets are having data centric customers whether there are more drop calls in the network where there are a lot of subscribers so all this traffic handling strategy strategies can be done via benchmarking but these are all again you need not go on the field for this just the oss data the network level data can be connected from the network itself and then by excel and some proprietary tools you can you know understand the whole traffic strategy which is existing and can propose a better traffic strategy load balancing strategies so then you analyze the ran parameters ran nothing but radio access network so when it comes to the radio part which is you know the very most important part apart from the core network because now in 5g the radio in itself becomes the core because this it's a flat architecture in 5g and the elements have reduced because you know the signaling is very low the signaling time is very less so ran has evolved a lot when it comes to 5g so it's called evolved ran that is why and then the signaling messages from uu so these are the basic interfaces between the mobile and the bts and between the mobile and another mobile and then you compare the different operators traffic strategies so if you have to understand you know which one is doing good and whatever so you got to do a bit of a comparison of the traffic handling strategies and the the influence of the basic parameters as well how the parameters of the network are set up so you do a comparison of which parameter is tuned to which value so this again you can do a comparison 
So these are all the special services.